Yo, what's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to Toddy D's Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Brooklyn Zone Toddy D. Welcome to episode six. Tonight we're going to discuss several topics, so let's just get right into it. For starters, yesterday there was a house show on Sunday where Randy Orton, the Viper, was wrestling AJ Styles. And in the beginning of the match, Randy Orton apparently broke, well not broke, but apparently he blew his knee. He was taken to the back by personnel and they were looking him over. At this point in time, we don't know if it's a work, we don't know if it's real, but tonight on the last episode of 2019's Monday Night Raw, Randy Orton will be discussing the apparent injury. So with that being said, hopefully all is well, and this is just some kind of work for a future program with AJ Styles potentially at the Royal Rumble or sometime in the near future. Let's hope the Viper is well, and let's just hope that this is in fact a work. And speaking of Monday Night Raw, tonight we're going to have The Wedding. Lana and Bobby Lashley allegedly are tying the knot. You know, a little word of advice to Lana out there. When you cut some videos, make sure you take off your wedding ring, who you're really married to, Rusev, because, you know, not for nothing, your promos are more are more phony than your accent. But that's just, uh, that's just me. That's just my opinion. So uh, tonight, hopefully, this wedding will be short, simple, and sweet, and not that boring. I'm hoping that it gets interrupted by Rusev or something happens. I remember back in the days on Saturday night's main event, Uncle Elmer was marrying that woman, Joyce. Jesse the Body Ventura was doing commentary with Vince McMahon. And who comes down ringside to break it all up? The late, great Rowdy Roddy Piper. He says, I think you stink, you stink, and this whole damn wedding stinks. And the best part about that wedding, Jesse the Body Ventura, I'll never forget it. You had Joyce and Uncle Elmer having their first kiss as husband and wife. And Jesse the Body Ventura, quote unquote, said, McMahon, that looks like two carp going down the Mississippi River going after the same piece of corn. And then you hear the uh, goody goody two two choos of the 80s Vince McMahon. Oh, come on, Jesse. Fun times, great times. Hopefully this wedding will be just as funny or they can just finally scrap this horrible storyline and we can move forward. So more to follow tonight with that. And the other ma- one of the matches that's announced for tonight on Monday Night Raw is the TLC rematch between Buddy Murphy and Alistair Black. These two have been ripping it up. They've been tearing it up big time, beating the living crap out of each other. I personally have loved every moment of it. It takes me back to the old school wrestling. You know, it just shows that there is some wrestling left in this world and less entertainment and more physicality. Buddy Murphy's awesome. Alistair Black is incredible. And I think the two of them have tremendous chemistry. And eventually, you know, Buddy Murphy, you know, they'll probably go back and forth. He may get a victory, you know, perhaps tonight. But either way, I'm looking forward to this rivalry to keep going. And even in the future, you know, can you imagine Buddy Murphy and Alistair Black a tag team? Hey, don't make no jokes. Don't, don't uh, you know, cut me short on that because look at Sheamus and Cesaro. Back in the day, they were fighting each other left and right, tooth and nail. And with Mick Foley stepping in, they had the best of seven. And then they became one of the best tag teams out there. So, you know, never say never, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, shift over to AEW wrestling. I heard that the enforcer, Arn Anderson, is back. And he is now in AEW. He is all elite. Arn Anderson going to be the head coach and advisor to Cody Rhodes starting in 2020. It should be really interesting. I want you guys to think about something for one minute here. You have Tully Blanchard currently in AEW. Now you have Arn Anderson in AEW. Could it be not too soon in the near distant future that, woo, the nature boy might be showing up on AEW programming? You never know. I mean, you know. You know, Ric Flair, if money, you know, money talks and we all know it walks. So the nature boy, woo, might be going there soon. And not for nothing, I think it would be great capped off if they had like Barry Windham in a backstage role and maybe like a J.J. Dillon appearance. You know, I know the AEW allegedly wants to be their own brand and start off with new guys and have a whole different outlook on wrestling. But every now and then it's nice to have some nostalgia there. You got the, you got the Rock and Roll Express, they're there. So why not have, you know, Tully on, potentially, you know, Ric Flair, maybe James J. Dillon join, Barry Windham, that'd be awesome. That's just my opinion. And speaking of AEW, you know, good old JR, who I'm a huge fan of, been a fan of Jim Ross for many, many years. I think he has, you know, by far the best commentary. You know, Triple H said it best a long time ago. 
you know, Jim Ross's hero was Gordon Soley, the late great Gordon Soley. And Jim Ross said he always wants to aspire to be as good, if not as good as possible. And Triple H said it best that he has surpassed Gordon Soley. JR is awesome. His commentary is great. But I got a bone to pick with you, JR. Earlier today, I was reading on social media that you were looking to have the Midnight Express get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, before people jump down my throat, I'm not saying that the that the Midnight Express is not worthy because they are. They were a hell of a tag team. They're looking to induct, you know, he JR would like to induct Stan Lane, you know, but uh, Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, along with Jim, James G uh, James E Cornett, excuse me. But now the whole thing is this: the Midnight Express. Don't get me wrong, they're awesome. They were great, and they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But as a WWE guy, you know, then WWF. You know, I'm from New York, I'm from the East Coast, and I grew up on WWF programming. And in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of other people out there would agree with this, don't you think the WWE should induct actual tag teams that were homegrown or, you know, spent most of their time and their tenure in the WWE or then F at the time? Think about it. You have teams like the Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, the Killer Bees, the Rougeau Brothers, the Dream Team, Brutus the Barber Beefcake before he was the barber with Greg the Hammer Valentine. Yeah, the U.S. Express, Mike Rotundo and Barry Windham. Later, Danny Spivey took Barry Windham's place. You have the Rockers, the Brain Busters. I just mentioned Ar- Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard earlier. You know, you had the Hardy Boys in the 90s, the Dudleys, Edge and Christian. And the one tag team that I personally would love to see in the WWE would be Here Comes the Axe, Here Comes the Smasher, Good Old Demolition, The Walking Disasters. But the problem is this. Demolition is currently still having a lawsuit with, with you know WWE, so I don't see them getting inducted, unfortunately, anytime soon. The only major tag team from that era that I can think of off the top of my head that was inducted already a couple of years ago was the Legion of Doom, a.k.a. the Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal, along with Paul Ellering. Now, you know, that was a great decision. They should be going to the Hall of Fame because even though the LOD, they were the Road Warriors for most of their tenure in the NWA, they were all across the globe, and they did spend a good time, you know, amount of time before, uh, you know, Hawks passing in WWE. So, like the Legion of Doom, the other tag teams I just mentioned should definitely have a place in the Hall of Fame before the AKA, you know, outside tag teams from different companies get inducted. You know, I have again, I have no problem with other, you know, people being recognized for their contributions in, in the world of professional wrestling, but I feel that if it's called the WWE Hall of Fame. First and foremost, you should be inducting WWE, you know, Hall of Famers who wrestled for WWE, ex actual WWE guys. And once we get down to the bottom of the barrel, then I can see, you know, looking outside the box, like having the Midnight Express and other tag teams, you know, join the ranks of the WWE Hall of Fame. And speaking of the Hall of Fame, they've already announced so far, obviously, we all know that Batista is going to be going in, well deserved, and the New World Order. Now, the funny thing is, and I mentioned this on one of my last podcasts, so I'm not going to get too much into it, but the whole thing the whole thing is this with the NWO. If you guys remember, Hall and Nash started the NWO. They were the outsider, outsiders prior to the NWO. So Hall and Nash came in, first Hall, then Nash. And then at the Bash of the Beach, we all know that Hulk Hogan was supposed to team with Sting and Macho Man against the outsiders and a mystery opponent. So obviously we all know it was Hogan. And that night in the ring, when they threw all that crap in the ring, the way the late, Jean, the late great Mean Gene Oakland stated, look at all this crap in the ring. Think about it. Hulk Hogan said right in that speech, he said, all the crap represents these fans. But first and foremost, he said, you can consider this, you can call this, meaning him, Hall and Nash, the new world order of professional wrestling brother. So with that being said, the way the LOD was inducted into the Hall of Fame with Precious Paul Ellering, the way the Four Horsemen were inducted into the Hall of Fame which with James J. Dillon, Eric Bischoff, Hogan, Hall, and Nash, and the story should be inducted into the Hall of Fame as the NWO. They were the originals. That's the original band. I said this once. I'll say it again. No disrespect to Sean Waltman. He got inducted with DX. I mean, I think that's good enough. If you're going to induct him, you might as well induct the Giant. You might as well induct Fake Sting. Uh, Bagwell, even Virgil, DiBiase, and everybody else. You had so many people. Norton. You had so many different renditions of the New World Order. So if you're going to put in a guy like X-Pac or Six-Pac or Waltman, One, Two, Three Kid, Lightning Kid, whatever you want to call him, you put him in, you got to put in the entire faction. That's why it should just be Hogan, Hall, and Nash along with the conductor. Easy e Eric Bischoff. Like I said before, Legion of Doom with Precious Paul Ellering. 
James J. Dillon with the Four Horsemen, and and uh, Eric Bischoff should go with the New World Order with Hogan Hall and Nash. End the story. So now they haven't announced any other people yet, you know, to get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. But I have been hearing some rumblings. I've been hearing a lot of, uh, you know, rumors. You know, they usually induct a woman into the Hall of Fame. And I'm hearing this year, Michelle McCool, you know, The Undertaker, a.k.a. Mark Calloway's wife, you know, former wrestler in her own right, is supposedly getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm also hearing that William Regal is a uh, option for the Hall of Fame. People are considering Christian uh, and a couple other people that I really, you know, don't recall at this point in time. But there are some other, you know, people they have in mind. And, uh, you know, right around the corner is the Royal Rumble. And this year, the 30-man Royal Rumble and the 30-woman Royal Rumble, I believe, is going to be 10, you know, men and women from NXT, 10 from Raw, and then 10 from SmackDown. And usually, you always have, like, a surprise in the mix. So, for the women, they're saying that, you know, Victoria might be a surprise entrant. So, who knows? Maybe she might get inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, you don't know. I have a feeling that Booker T is going to be a surprise entrant in the Royal Rumble this year because of what happened with the Revival. And me personally... I would love to have a big blow off at the Royal Rumble where the Revival beats down Booker T after they throw him out of the ring. You know, they humiliate him and insult him, which would set up a nice Harlem Heat reunion against the Revival at WrestleMania. If I were the Booker, if I had the pen in my hand, that's what I would call, and that's exactly how I would call it. So, you know, more to follow with that. Hopefully, we'll see something interesting at the Royal Rumble. And speaking of the Royal Rumble, I, for one, was hoping to see CM Punk make a return. But I don't know if it's in the cards. I'm thinking that, you know, um, Morrison will be joining the Royal Rumble. So we'll see what happens with that. I think John Morrison's time is now. I think the Rumble will be a perfect, you know, opportunity for him to be officially back in WWE. I think it was kind of ridiculous that they had to have him on that show, The Bump, and kind of spoil something. You know, I remember back in the days before there was internet and all this social media garbage, you know, they had the dirt sheets and, you know, even though the dirt sheets I wasn't too much a fan of because I like the element of surprise. I like being, you know, shocked saying, holy, you know what, this is awesome. I am so great. I'm so glad this guy came back or this woman came back. There's no more surprises in professional wrestling, and it drives me crazy. There's always spoilers, and it just ruins the fun. It takes the fun out of it. I mean, when the Hardy Boys made that surprise return at WrestleMania, if you look at the crowd, not one person didn't have a reaction. Everybody popped huge because nobody knew. People had feelings. There were thoughts. There were rumblings. But it was really kept secret as best as possible so people would be, you know, happily surprised. And that's what we're looking to have moving forward in the year 2020. I'm hoping to have surprises. I'm hoping that CM Punk eventually does lace up the boots and get back in the ring. There's so many, you know, feuds and storylines that are left on the table, money to be left on the table. So who knows, maybe CM Punk will, uh, you know, say to himself, hey, what the hell, you know, it's good money. I might as well come back. I'm not getting any younger. And there's rumors, and there was talk that uh, Stephanie McMahon, not only does she want CM Punk to come back, but she wants AJ Lee to come back. But uh, I think that's highly unlikely. I think if Punk were to come back, she might have an on-air role. But I highly doubt she'll be wrestling again. That's just my take. But, you know, who knows? Anything can happen. And, you know, that's about it for now. So, you know, Monday Night Raw is going to be coming on soon. It should be good. Hopefully it'll be good. It's the last show of the, you know, of the year, of the decade. And then uh, Wednesday, AEW comes back. There's a lot of cool things going on there. I know, uh, you know, Chris Jericho, he's going to be going down to uh, New Japan. And, uh, you know, he'll be wrestling there. And then he wanted to put his title on the line. But I don't think that's going to happen. There's a lot of, uh, you know, talk that that was just basic talk and that it's actually just hearsay and it's not going to happen. But I'm looking forward to 2020. Hopefully there'll be some good feuds. I'm hoping to see John Moxley and Chris Jericho tear it up and have some great matches. I'm looking forward to seeing the role of Arn Anderson. Uh, MJF was on social media today making fun of Arn Anderson, you know, with his age, that he doesn't even know his name. So I probably would say that good old MJF has a spine buster in his future from Double A. I think the Enforcer will catch up to MJF, and when he does, you better be careful, brother, because you got warned here on Toddy D's Pro Wrestling Podcast that it's going to happen. So if I were you, make sure you can back up your words, because if not... These old dogs, they still got gas in the tank, and they're still ready to rock and roll. So you never know what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, one last thing, I'd like to give a shout-out to Danny Cage, to the Monster Factory, 
They got an open session this Saturday, January 4th from 12 noon to 4 p.m. It's an open session to people that have past experience in the world of professional wrestling. You can bump in the ring. You can go on their mats. You can have a lot of fun over there and enjoy yourself. Yours truly, Brooklyn Zone Toddy D, might be showing up there. Not to really kill myself too much, but just to see what I can still do. So, you know, you may be seeing me there. You may not. It's up in the cards for now. We don't know. Hopefully, I'll be able to make it. If not, then I wish everybody the best of luck and have a great old time on Saturday. And I like to thank also at this time at Wrestler Weekly. They gave me a shout out this uh, past Sunday telling people to check out my podcast. I really appreciate that. Good looking out. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy these podcasts and more to come. And, you know, whatever I can do to make everybody more happy out there, whatever you want to listen to, whatever requests you might have, you know, hit me up at Toddy D Wrestling on Twitter. Go to my YouTube page, Toddy D, that's T-O-D-D-Y with a space letter D. And any ideas you guys have for something you want Brooklyn Zone to discuss here on my podcast, please let me know. I'd like to hear from everybody. I'd like to hear all your opinions. And please leave comments on my YouTube page as well. The more the better. Please follow me on Twitter. I mean, a lot of you guys like my page. You give me a lot of love, which I do appreciate. And I want you to keep doing that. But at the same time, just go to the side and hit that like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. So hopefully tonight's role will be really good. It'll be one for the ages. And I'm hoping that uh, this Bobby Lashley, Lana thing goes by real fast. I'm looking forward the most to tonight to seeing Buddy Murphy and Alistair Black knock the crap out of each other. It should be really good. It should be uh, full balls to the wall action. And, you know, hopefully there'll be some you know good matches to follow before and after that because that's all they uh, announced for the car tonight. Just the, you know, Randy Orton update on his knee, the wedding between Lana and Bobby Lashley. And the TLC rematch between Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy. So stay tuned tonight. Enjoy. Drop me a line on Twitter. I'm Brooklyn Zone Toddy D. I know this is a short episode, but Raw's going to be coming on soon. I got some work to do before it starts. So I'm going to say later for now. And uh, hit me up. And stay tuned for the future episode of Episode 7 of Toddy D's Pro Wrestling Podcast. Be well. Take care. Happy New Year, everybody. And I'll see all of you at ringside.